This is basil pesto, but it's not the authentic one. Oh no, I took the authentic version to the next level. I used two special ingredients that you are gonna love it. Oh yeah, if you want my authentic recipe, go and check it out, basil pesto, Vincenzo's plate, and you don't go wrong. But this one, oh, once you try this, you don't want anything else anymore. Pesto can be made in different ways. You don't use basil, you use sandra tomatoes. You can use arugula, you can use uh, spinach, you can use anything you like. This is my favorite pesto version and I hope you enjoy it too. This is how you take the pesto to the next level. Pistacchio, oh yes. 50 grams of pistacchio. You can use more or less. This is the replacement of the pine nuts, which is the authentic recipe. Pistacchio oh, is the bomb. Now, instead of grana padano or parmigiano reggiano, we're using pecorino romano, three tablespoons, salty, rich, boom, pungent. One garlic cloves, you don't need more than that. You want more, use more, but one is more than enough. Top quality extra virgin olive oil, top quality, it's important. A little bit of salt. The most important ingredient is the basil, okay? You can buy the basil from the farmer market, you can buy it from the supermarket, not the best, but it does a job, or you can grow it in your backyard, on your balcony, in a pot, up to you. I grow mine, and let's go and get it. This is my backyard, and that's where the basil is, together with the parsley and the strawberries. Now here I have uh, a bowl where I'm gonna put the basil, scissors, so, by cutting it here at the bottom, we give a chance to the basil to grow again. So this way, see this way? So this can come back to life and can grow more. That's how nature works. It looks like it's a lot, but it's not a lot. I'm going to fill this up. I think here we have enough to make a nice bunch of pesto. We do want to wash the basil because the, the soil and um, insects, so uh, it's always good to have a, a nice wash. So what we do is we fill up the bowl with water, so we soak the basil, and then we're gonna remove each basil leaf by hand, one at a time. So what we do now, we get a kitchen towel, put it here, and we need to get the basil one at a time. Yeah, I know, this is gonna be time consuming, but it's worth it. And this way you can also see which one is good, which one is bad. Because you might have some basil leaves that you don't want to use. You might say to me, oh, I like to use everything. I can use a stem. Well, the stem is bitter. So if you use the, this, you're going to have a very bitter basil pesto. And that, that's not what you want. We're gonna do this very gently. So what we do now, we wanna dry a little bit, just like that. Don't press too hard, not too hard. Just need to dry gently. Doesn't matter if we have a little bit of water, it's okay. Gently, because if you press too much, then we leave the flavors on top of the kitchen towel. We don't want that, we don't want that, okay. So we're okay, the basil is ready. Now we need to blend it. Now, we have the beautiful basil here, but before we blend the basil, we need to do this. And this is very, very important to do. We do not want to make the basil too hot, otherwise we kill it, okay? The basil should blend for seconds, like maybe 20 seconds, no, even too much, okay? If you overheat the basil, you kill it, you destroy it, and it, it's not good, okay? You don't need mortal and pesto, okay? Yes, it is good, it's authentic, but I can show you today that you can do it with a blender and it tastes as good, if even better, than the mortal and pesto. First thing you wanna do is to be very generous with the extra virgin olive oil. Very generous. Now, you probably need more during the process, okay? So we start with this amount and then we add more later. But the extra virgin olive oil is very important for this recipe. Now, the garlic. Close, and we crush the garlic with the extra virgin olive oil. Now is the time for the pistacchio to go in. Right 
in there now. This is what I want to show you now. See what's happening now? Now we have extra virgin olive oil mixed with garlic, mixed with pistachio. This is the moment where we add the basil, okay? And here we go. Put in there. Don't forget what I said, we do not want to overheat the basil, okay? So we don't want to cook the basil, basically, okay? So we do a little bit at a time. And gently. We don't want to turn the blender on and leave it. We just want to go like this. A little bit at a time. As you can see, I probably overdid it. it, it, it so quickly it, it, it blends, so quickly uh, it, it turns into pesto, okay? So you don't need to do it for too long. Here we add more. I'm not adding any oil at this point because it's too early. But what I'm going to add is three tablespoons of pecorino romano. Oh, beautiful flavors. Three tablespoons. And just a little bit of salt. The pecorino is salty, so it's not too much. Let's put the rest of the basil. And in a few seconds, we have the next level, the top of the top basil pesto. So what we can do at this point, you can see it's a bit dry. So what we do, we add more extra virgin olive oil. This will also help us to blend what is left there. Don't be scared of extra virgin olive oil because when, you cook, when you're going to make pasta or whatever with the pesto, you already have the extra virgin olive oil in there. We are not done yet because we have more basil here. Look, stuck on the side. Nothing goes to waste. So everything has to go inside. Okay, you're trying to escape. It's not your lucky day, I'm sorry. So, oh, look at that, look how beautiful, look at that. Look at that. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, this is the pesto. This is the pesto that you've been waiting for all your life. Yes, tacchio, basil pesto, with the pecorino romano punch, the kick that you want. Look oh. at this, baby. Look. See, I thought I had a lot of basil, but it was not a lot. Maybe I can do two different um, pasta dishes with this, or maybe just one. In summer, I make pesto pretty much every two weeks. And you save a lot of money, because if you go to the shop and you buy that fake pesto from the jar, that guy, they put sunflower oil in there, they put ingredients that don't belong to pesto, and they still charge you top dollars. Nothing goes to waste, you know why? Because this is pure green happiness. It's not going to waste, I'll lick you. Mmm, 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 mmm. See, this little plate hmm, probably is worth, what, $30 at the shop? Maybe more? This is natural, fresh, and the pistachio really takes the flavor to the next level. I cannot describe this to you because it's something you need to try yourself. I love pistachio pesto. I love rocket pesto. I love sun-dried tomato pesto. I love basil pesto. You can do pesto in many different ways. It's basically blending your favorite ingredients together, okay? But following these recipe, so, you know, the cheese, the garlic, the extra virgin olive oil, okay? Uh, we're not making hummus or, or anything, or, or, or dips, you know? This is pesto. You can replace basil with anything you like. You can replace pine nuts, anything you like. You wanna use macadamia, go for it. Walnuts, you can do it, but for me, this is the, the best one, and I hope you enjoy it too.
Time to try it. Oh, look how beautiful. We gotta put on the bread. I think the bread is the best thing to use to taste the pesto, to see if it's good. Mm. Mm. The basil takes over. The pistachio is really trying to, to call me and knock the door and say, hey, I'm here too. It's not just about the basil. And the pecorino romano is what combines everything together. It's what makes everything taste so good. Ah. Mm. Mm. So, so good. The best way to store the pesto is to get a head tight container and, and you keep it in the fridge. I think it can, it can last up to two weeks, okay? Hopefully you won't because you use it earlier. But if you, let's say, you want to use the pesto after two weeks, you will find a layer or a, like a dark layer on top. Just remove that part and use the pesto that's underneath, okay? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, when you put it in the fridge, uh, you do get the top layer uh, to get darker. It is okay, but the best part is underneath the layer. Write in the comment below, what is your favorite paste? sun dried tomato paste? Macadamia and basil? Arugula? What is that? Let us know. So thank you so much for watching this fantastic episode. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. I'm gonna make gnocchi with pesto. Vincenzo's Plate. Bye guys.